this bill extends uh, the functions and powers, or seeks to uh, um, extend the functions and powers of the CNAG to cover uh, IBRC. It was the Taoiseach that first suggested that the CNAG review the site serve sales process, and it was then pointed out to him that IBRC does not come within his remit. Uh, with this bill, I'm attempting to address that problem by broadening the remit of the CNAG. The reason I'm anticipating the need to involve the CNAG, if not, um, if, if not uh, uh, you know, a, a full uh, commission of investigation, which may well be a better option, is because I believe that the government have got this badly wrong, not least because most of the key players in the site serve saga have links with KPMG and its eventual purchaser and vice versa. It is a web of connections and conflicts that requires uh, outside, outside eyes to unravel. I have no doubt that the special liquidator is more than capable of doing such a review, but his uh, direct involvement in the sales process, his relationship with the eventual purchaser of SiteServe, and his current actions in the High Court in supporting uh, Mr O'Brien versus RTE place him in a position where there is at the very least a perceived conflict of interest, if not an actual conflict of interest. The review is not confined to SiteServe, but it is the transaction that prompted the review. I would worry about the transaction actions that have been excluded from the review, given that what we now know, that in the final months before prom night, the relationship between the department and IBRC had completely broken down. If deals were, were being done without the knowledge or input of the minister, then we need to know what they were. We are now aware, for example, that the former CEO of IBRC made verbal agreements with Dennis O'Brien to allow him to extend the terms of his already uh, expired loans. We also know uh, that the verbal agreement was never escalated to the Credit Committee for approval. I am led to believe, and I would welcome the Minister clarifying the, the, the rates applicable at this time, that the extension also attracted uh, some extremely favourable interest terms. I understand that Mr O'Brien was enjoying a rate of around one and a quarter percent when IBRC and arguably should, when IBRC could and arguably should have been charging seven and a half percent. We are talking about outstanding sums here that are upwards of 500 million. The interest rate applied is not an insignificant issue for the public interest. Uh, we also know that um, Dennis O'Brien felt confident enough in his dealings with IBRC that he could write to uh, Kieran Wallace as the special liquidator and demand that the same favourable terms extended to him by way of a verbal agreement could be continued. Uh, we now have Kieran Wallace, who has been appointed by the government to conduct the IBRC re review, actually joining with IBRC and Dennis O'Brien in the High court, court and seeking to injunct the information I've outlined from coming into the public domain. Surely that alone uh, represents a conflict. In FOI documents released to me, the Minister, his officials and the Central Bank and even the Troika acknowledge that IBRC, the former Anglo-Irish Bank, is no ordinary bank and there is a significant public interest because uh, the bank had been, uh, had been fully nationalised and was in wind-down mode. They all accept that this is the people's money that we're dealing with and that there can be no dispute regarding the public interest in this. The same FOI materials detail instances where the Minister can uh, specifically intervene and issue a ministerial order that, uh, that, um, that material matters have significant public interest. Included in, in these uh, material matters, matters are instances uh, that are outside the ordinary course of business. I would argue that what I have outlined here regarding ver verbal deals, extensions, etc., are outside the normal course of business, and I would ask the Minister to exercise his right to intervene in the current proceedings and defend the public interest. I have a motion on the order paper signed by the majority of the opposition. Uh, 45 members have signed it, and more are welcome to, calling for uh, a debate into the proposed review. When I tried to raise it on the order of business, I was silenced and I was told to take it up with my whip. I am the whip of the technical group, and I did raise it at the weekly whips meeting. Um, the government chief whip, whip told me that they would not be altering the KPMG review. Uh, the government would not be giving time uh, to debate this issue um, and suggested that we use private members' time. It's not just an opposition issue, Minister. This 
is an issue for all of this House. It's an issue of serious public concern where there's public money involved. And I know if you got your hands on maybe an extra 20 million, I don't think you'd have to think too hard on how to spend that, uh, spend that money. I urge the government to reconsider this and give the, the bill and the motion uh, the time they deserved. I, I believe this is in the public interest. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy. So, could I ask, is the bill being opposed? No. 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 Well, then, if not, I declare the motion to leave, for leave to introduce agreed. Since this is a private member's bill, second stage must understanding orders be taken in private member's time. The Deputy should therefore move that the second stage be taken in private member's time. You move? Is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. Okay.